All right, here's the derivative of the hyperbolic cotangent. So d dx of cos of x equals negative hyperbolic cosecant squared of x. So I'm not really sure how this would be pronounced. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump right in here. So d dx of cos of x. Uh, I want to write down some stuff here just to show you that uh, there are a bunch of different ways we can go with this. Um, but we're only going to do it one way. So uh, let's go ahead and do it like this. Uh, d dx. So cos of x is actually uh, 1 over the hyperbolic tangent of x. So we could do it like this. Okay, 1 over tangent of x. So if we want, we could do quotient rule on this, or we could go back to uh, caution singe and say, okay, hyperbolic cotangent is actually equal to uh, hyperbolic cosine divided by hyperbolic sine. All right, so we could do it like that. Um, or we could go back to uh, the definition in terms of e. Okay, so this is a d dx of e to the x plus e to the negative x over e to the x minus e to the negative x. So we could do it like that also. Um, so we could do quotient rule on this, or quotient rule on this, or quotient rule on this, or we could rewrite this first one um, and do a chain rule. And technically speaking, we could also do a product rule and chain rule on either one of these, but that's going to be a little too messy. Um, so there are a bunch of different ways to go about doing this. Um, but because we've done stuff like this before, kind of, with other functions, uh, we've done a lot with the quotient rule already, uh, and this will be a little messier than we'd like. Um, let's go ahead and do something with this here. Okay, So we'll get rid of these. So again, I just wanted to write those down just to show you uh, that there are a bunch of different ways that we could do this. But we're just going to do it this one way here. So we could do quotient rule with this, but let's go ahead and do it like this so that we can get more practice uh, with the chain rule. So let's rewrite that like this. We'll put these brackets here. Okay, so 1 over tang of x is the same thing as tang of x uh, to the negative first power. So you want to be very careful um, not to write it like this, because if you say this, um, that's actually the inverse hyperbolic tangent of x, and that's not the same thing as, uh, as this. Okay? So it's the same thing with the circular trig functions, the regular ones that we talked about a while ago. Um, you know, like inverse sine of x, uh, inverse sine of x is not the same thing as 1 over sine of x, right? It's not the same thing. So you want to be careful with your exponents here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, proceed with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the chain rule here. So if we start at the x, work our way out, what's going on? First thing that happens is the tang, and then after that, we raise it to the negative first power. So the little guy is tang of x, and the big guy is to the negative first power. Okay. So our big guy um, is to the negative first power. So if we just have x to the negative first, then we know that the derivative is negative 1 times x to the negative 2. All right. Now the chain rule says uh, to take the derivative of this, we want to do derivative of the big guy. Okay. Derivative of the big guy, which is going to be this, except uh, we're going to evaluate it at the little guy. So derivative of the big guy evaluated at the little guy. And then the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the little guy. And the little guy is tangent of x, or hyper, uh, hyperbolic tangent of x. So uh, we know from the last video that the derivative of tang of x is hyperbolic secant squared of x. All right. So again, um, the big guy is like x to the negative first here. Okay, The big guy is raising things to the negative first power. So the derivative of that would be this. Chain rule says do the derivative of the big guy, but evaluate it at the little guy. Okay, So derivative of the big guy, evaluate it at the little guy, multiplied by the derivative of the little guy. So that's what we got going on here. All right, so let's go ahead and rewrite this. Um, so this is negative uh, 1 times 1 over tang squared of x times hyperbolic secant squared of x. All right. And this is uh, the same thing as, let's go ahead and write this uh, in terms of uh, signs, uh, singes and coshes. So this will be negative 1 times, uh, if we have 1 over tang squared, that's pretty much uh, hyperbolic cotangent squared. Or in other words, it's uh, cosh squared of x over singe 
square root of x. Okay, Let's zoom in a little bit here. So if we have 1 over tan squared of x, that's the same thing as cosh squared over sin squared. Okay, Because 1 over tan is pretty much a cos, hyperbolic uh, cotangent. Um, and that's going to be this in terms of cosh and singe. Okay, so then hyperbolic secant squared, uh, we know that that's equal to 1 over cosh squared of x. All right, so this is good because now we have this cancellation going on here. Um, cosh squared and cosh squared cancel. And what we actually have left is just negative 1 times 1 over singe squared of x. Okay, so uh, this is negative 1 over singe squared of x, which just by definition is a negative hyperbolic cosecant squared of x. All right, and that's the proof, uh, one of many ways of doing the proof that uh, the derivative of hyperbolic cotangent of x is equal to the negative uh, hyperbolic cosecant squared of x.